Hello, welcome to another work working the Wichelum. So today, what we're going to do, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, Pre-recorded sessions, so if you get questions, you can send them in after. We'd love to have them. I'm going to do small books. Um, why? Get lots of people say, could you do something in the box? And this came about from a training session years ago with a group where we want to do something like a, a jewellery box. But we don't want it having lots of dovetails. Don't want the maybe expensive by the dovetail jig or learning all that technique of doing hand cut dovetails. So it's quite a tricky thing to get right. So could we make something as a, a small type jewellery box that's relatively easy to do using basic stuff maybe? So basic hand tools. So we're going to use a bit of a mixture. Going to use electric router, but on the bench. Got a little bit of jig making, and that's one question we get. Could you make a jig for what? So we're going to do that today a little bit. I've got the jig already made, but we're going to explain how it works, what it does. So our little box, I'm going to do something similar to this. So this is quite nice. This is some Tasmanian blackwood. Now I had to think about that. Okay, I've had this for quite a few years. And it has oak lid, a bit of decorative material. I have cedarwood bottom. That's cedar aluminum. All right, so that's there. And liner, so the lid fits over the liner, and um, we're going to show you how you can adjust that so you get things to fit nicely. Lift up, okay, so it's got just that little bit of grip. Joint wise, we're doing almost like a halving joint in the corner here. I think you can probably just about see that. It'll become more relevant as we go through. So, I won't say a totally simple box, but something that's going to give you something that's a bit of enjoyment. Could possibly do it with your kids. So, the Quite a nice little project to do, okay? Size-wise, you can make it whatever you like. All right, that's quite a fundamental part. It doesn't have to be a set in stone size. People are gonna say, what have you got here? Well, we'll go through that a little bit as we go through. I can give you the size as we've got, how it's made, all right? But you can deviate away from the sizes quite easily. So, our box we're gonna make, there it is, flat pack, Ikea form. So we have, I'm going to use some ash. All right, so these are machined up. I've got a bit of elm I'm going to use in the lid. I've had this for years. Some cedar for the base. And again, you can use whatever materials you can get hold of. Don't go thinking you've got to have exactly the same things. All right, so we have our materials. The ash, obviously can make the size. So for today, we don't need that bit for a minute. Let's put the top and bottom out of the way. Our focus really is going to be on the side bits. Do you think I know someone's going to ask when we get the, the questions? I have, let's have a quick look, put it onto our metric, make sure we go to zero. I have 70 millimeters wide, that way. These are from memory, I think, 10 millimeters thick. All right, 10.46 if you really want to be, all right. But as I said, you don't have to have any particular size. I'm just going to grab something that is important, though. When you machine your wood up, just about see your thicknesses. Your width, as we said, you could have whatever you like. You could make it wider. But your thickness, you want to try and make something the same as some sheet material. So I've got some OSB strand board. When I machined it up, believe it or not, I even put this through the thicknesser. So it's exactly the same height as our ash. So that's given us something that's nice and level. That's quite an important part. So when you do the machining for this, machine up some, all right? We're gonna see how much you need as we go through. First thing we want to do, select our box bits. Now I've already kind of looked at stuff in here. This has got a very wild bit of grain in here. I'm actually gonna put that bit out of the way. I'm gonna use that as a, a setup piece. So make sure you machine up a little bit more wood than you're gonna need. These two bits are gonna make the sides and the ends. We're already kind of looking at why have I selected these? Because I've worked out the grain. If I start moving things about, I can get to almost continue. Turn that up on edge, look. You can see how that grain almost goes through. So, what I'm trying to do as I go around the box, it'll look like the grain continues running around it. And that'll be quite a nice feature. So, even at this stage, I'm starting to think about what we've got. This bit with that big wild bit in the middle, we could use, but it's going to be more difficult to get that grain to continue. As much as it was out the same length, I'm going to put that bit just really for the setting up. So, we can use that as our guide. So, we've got a spare bit at this stage. 
Right, okay, let's get on then. So, first thing we've got to do, shooting board. All right, so we want that there. We need to, a couple of things, so square. Make sure these ends are nice and square and clean. You could do it my saw if you like, but I guarantee what I'm going to do with how I'm set up in here will give me a square edge and I can produce off a mitre saw. And that's quite a bold statement. So what we're looking at now, I'm going to get a plane. So number five, lots of us have a number five. You could go four, you could go bigger. I'm going to use it on its side. So I expect if we have a look, we've got the overhead camera there. Look. Okay, so we're going to use it there. Major thing with this before I start, make sure it's sharp. It's such a fundamental thing. We're going to slice across the end grain. Want it to be nice and sharp. So sharpen it for this task. You're also, with how we're using the shooting board, hitting the blade, if you like, on one area constantly. That one little area. So you're going to need to keep that touched up nice and sharp. So that's important. What do we want to do? We want to square up the ends and get them nice and square and clean. All right. So you probably can't really see totally on there, but we've got... Nice square edge, okay? I'm going to square across both ends. Even before I'm setting out what I want as my box, I can do both ends on this, then I can cut them to length. Once we cut them to length, we can then actually do them in pairs. So two sides, two ends, exactly the same way. So first thing, I want to shoot there. Just going to get my glasses. Next thing, when you go to hold the plane for this, if you hold too far back on where the blade is, you'll tilt it. Not good. Best place you can grip this, my thumb, and if I'm right-handed, I put in there or up on here. Got that way of gripping, just in there. So I'm actually pinching, if you like, almost between the frog. That means I'm not tilting down, I keep it square. The other place you can grip nicely, put your fingers just inside where the mouth is, get to there, put your hand on the top. But you want to keep it nice and square. Now I've already set my plane up a little bit, so we can actually go across. We're taking a little bit at the moment. I think you can probably see the shavings up here. Getting bigger. Not too much effort's required. Don't get having loads out, you're slicing end grain fibre. Look at these lovely shavings. I could just do this all day, just to... Next thing, square. So I'm going to hold this up to have got the light in here, which is great, because it makes my life easier to see that. That's good, one end done. Going to turn it over. Going to make sure we do the other. We've got a little bit to go there. Again, lovely shaving so we know we're not cutting too much. I can check that. That's good. Another board, exactly the same. Back to the square. That's good. One to go. So my shooting board, quite an important part. It allows me to do minute cuts but nice and accurately now we've looked at holding the square there i also looked earlier when i set the plane up to make sure that i'm square the opposite way across it so if you tilt your blade too much in the plane body you can angle the blade down top to bottom you'll get a slight chamfer cut you need to position that blade accurately just say up play around a little bit okay doesn't take too much effort worth the input okay so for a second then Let's have a quick look. What I'm looking at now, grain orientation, where things might continue nicely, which way round we could go. Don't know if you can see, that's not bad there, I can play around. Just seeing what's happening. This end, that looks quite nice, actually how this flows down through. And you've got to remember, we're making a corner. Over end, what happens up here? A bit wild there, turn it over, maybe. And this could be worth playing around with, just to see what the timber's doing for you. Maybe how things come together. All right, lots of moving about. And it's nice to do this on a project before you even start cutting anything. That looks quite good there, I like that. So that one got to be there. That's going to be side. I'm going to label it for you. This is going to be end. So they will continue, uh, there get right, side one there, that one's over, you confused it. 
end, which means this one will have to be a side, and we'll lose that. This has got to be an end. Right, so my bits of wood are just big enough really to give me what we need out of that. Size-wise, as we kind of said, we could go with what we have on the box. Now I'm going to kind of cheat because we have the box in front of me. I can even measure it. So 210 millimetres. All right. So side ones. Pencil's not too bad. Could do with a bit of a sharpen. Can get told off by a few fanatics now. Sharpening a, a pencil with a chisel. better so we want 210 millimeters on the side side there and here I've turned the rule around I can bring the 210 up to our square line we've just cut position I can draw a line all right instead of doing this scenario of playing with your fingertips again it flash on here and then you do this thing of about there six lines Get a nice crisp line, turn it round, neater. So in here we're going to use square, just to bring that up. That's good. Want a saw, what should we go with? Don't want anything too aggressive, nice and fine. I'm going to use my shooting board just as... A bench hook. I want to be outside my line. So a Japanese pull saw, so I've taken the workpiece on that back edge at the stop for the shooting board. Gently pulled towards me. Don't rush it, allow the saw to do the work. Not too much pace on there, not too much weight. Side facing me, so we know which side of the line I want to be. So we're cutting just outside. Again, you could go up and use your chop saw. I haven't got one in the room here, so it's kind of a case of go a hand. Let the weight of the saw do the work. Fingers just on the top, putting a little bit of pressure. Put it down. So we have our two sides. We want to get them exactly the same length. And this always throws people a little bit, so I'm just burning a few things you want. Japanese marking knife. I can see where I've cut these just up on here. I've still got a little bit of the pencil line left. So I know which is the end of that's just there. I think you can probably see it come in a bit more. Right, just see the pencil line there. So we know this end is nice and square. That's the end we played with. Now I want to get them the same length. Double sided tape. You don't need a lot. One. Two. Okay. Make sure it's stuck down. I did say you need a tiny little bit. Just peeling these off. Doesn't matter so much which way round I have my ends. Using the end stuff on the shooting board again just to give me something to put those together. Clamp them so these end up nice and flush. That's the end we've shot. This end, there's a bit of discrepancy. My pencil catches on here, it won't go all the way through together. Short ones, which we have. How wide can we go? Got a bit wider on the elm. I'm just looking at what I have as a, the boards that we've got for the top and the bottom. Come back a little bit. Let's have a measure. All right, I wonder if we can get up to 150. So what does that leave us there? We have enough there. Bring it back round. can see on here I've got fluffy edge, so I know that's the saw cut. This one I've got the pencil, we know we squared up there. So again, double checking as we're going through. 
make sure we get right bits not quite a lot of waste on here so we're going to do exactly the same as we did with the longer lumps set them up that surrogate got a little bit of waste to take off get comfortable with the saw moving my body around so I've got nice clean pendulum action for my arm pull back that motion you can probably hear the saw working just as I pull back go of course the saw this is quite fine this is what we would class as our dovetail saw type of backy again finger on the top here just adding that little bit of weight i don't need to go pushing anything here so my hands pinching securing it in fact i'm using a pull saw using that stop just as something to pull back against And just do a tight couple of little bits on there. One on there. Push them down. Peel that off, set it up so we've got it square. Same on the other end, I can come up. Found my fingertip here just to check where things are, check everything's level, push it together. So this now gives us something nice and square. On edge, all right, and then the other way. So then, back to our plane. Shaving just on the edge there, let's pull that out. Trying to see when things are down to where we want. Now, I still have a little bit of the pencil line. The pencil lines can be quite thick. Do we need to get right back to it? Now, the nice thing we're using what we're doing now, we can control how much we take off. Checking the other end still nice and square. I've still got on here a bit of the saw cut right in this corner, different color, and that you'll pick up if you start looking at the color of this. This is white, you get a polished cut bit. So, pencil bit here, different color. That tells me I'm not all the way back to nice and clean. So, we'll do a bit more. And occasionally, turn the work over can be good. Can have a look now so I hold it up I want to make sure I'm square a little bit of light there so I can see which corner it is I can focus on getting it tiny bit get back there now if you struggle to get it square the shooting board just checking where things are We've got a bit of movement there no it's good So if you struggle to get it square, and you're chasing one corner to the other, you can use one of your shavings, put it up against that stop. You could do a little bit of sticky tape if you like. If it's a constant problem where this isn't quite accurate to your board, it can be worth looking at. Just see what's going on. Checking things. Nearly. So now we have two boards exactly the same length. One lot done. 
on here we've stuck them together i can see there's a ridge here it's going to cause a little bit there I can focus on that now even when i bring the plane in now i've got a bit of a gap on here I don't know if we can see that on the overhead i don't know if you really notice it not quite showing so front edge of the plane on the board not quite touching um, so what am I getting at? My saw cut's not very good. I wasn't very square, but I wasn't going to tell. But okay, so this is where a shooting board comes into its own. That accuracy of taking off that much. Uh, feeling what's going on again. Still got a little bit on here. Got the white, which tells me we haven't cut it yet. Nice polished area, looking a lot cleaner. Bring it back in a bit. So, you don't have to see there's right, different colours. Worth looking at that colour. Again, have a quick check. I've still got a little bit of white down in this corner. So, we're chasing that. what's going on make sure things are the same nothing's moving about and obviously we're doing two layers now yeah it takes a bit more effort Whew. right okay a uh, tiny bit that's better now we're back to two boards same lump all the way through so, great. There we Let's put a few things back out of the way. We're done with the plane for a minute. Look at these. Aren't they lovely? Tiny little white shavings. Quite light. And grain fibres. So you're slashing across them. That's quite a, that's quite a task to do with a plane. Get nice and clean. So, Got to be sharp. So, shooting board. Let's put it out of the way quick clean up so we have our boards we've got the same same lengths so just gonna pull them apart we've got a little bit of tape that we know that's still stuck on here with your fingertips just rolling that off so one done there i can see it on here pushing across you can see me rolling this up i don't know if that shows so quite easy to roll off worth getting rid of it at this stage the double-sided tape just makes it easy to hold those together to put on the shooting board. So we need to do all four. There. Stuck into the bench now. Look, got a bit in there. Hold it off. Nothing on that one. That's done as well. Good. Okay. Now what we want to start to look at which way round do we want things. That's probably going to be there. We know we've got an end. Which way will it look better? That might look good there. That'll come into there. So now I'm making my box. So I've laid it down flat at the moment just to see where the grain kind of continues. If I put it up, I can go there, there. That one. That's got to go around there. So I've got to look at which way round I want the grain there. And there, that way. I could turn it round. I'm going to go there. So make up our box shape. On here, what I'm going to do one, one. I'm trying to be a bit heavy, so maybe you can see it. I know it's difficult to see some small stuff like this on the cameras, but it's worth labelling the joints. All right. Um, Gonna do inside edge. I don't know if I've got enough on here. Let's have a quick look. Just take off that word end. I'm gonna put inside face, inside face on there. We're gonna have one down right here. Okay, so we now have something that tells me the top edges and all our faces. All right, we've laid out our box formation. So I'm gonna just bring that back out the way for a second. We can put it around our little box we have. Now we said to you we're going to do a little bit of routing. So I've made up routing jig, okay? 
Let's lose the saw, that can go back in there. So I made up the jig, really the fact it takes a little bit of time before you get going, so it's worth looking at, it saves us time on the video. As I said when we started, I machined up some OSB, so it doesn't have to be OSB, it can be whatever you like, you could use plywood, MDF, but the most important bit is you machine it up to the same thickness as the board that you're working on. It needs to be the same. I've then cut some strips and I've laid them out, so playing with this is my two sides, if I lay them down, go bring that up, can come back one. If I position this and we haven't got to move it again in a second, I think that will go to there. Those can come up out the vice. If I get my fingers to work, that's better. And then down here, got a spacer just to go in. I think we'll go that end. Just so I can hold this in the vice. All right. So I don't know where we go. <sighs> on the overhead camera as well. Let's have a look on there. Okay, that's great. That, I just want to see the position on the bench where we got this. So my plan with this, this is our two boards. We say sides. They will go in oh, and they will fit in under there. All right, so you can see I've slid them in. Now you also probably got the grasp of, I had to do a little bit of effort to push them in. Got to get it back out. All right, so they fit nice and tight. Whew. Right, okay. So in here, what we got? The OSB board, like I said, I've cut into some strips. All right, nice and parallel, not that critical. I've also made sure the ends down here are square. So this bit along the front is one piece. There's one there, one there. I've screwed them down. I screwed them down so they are the width of my two work pieces laid side by side. This becomes a lamp stop. The bit on here we're gonna cover in a second. So at the moment we've got that U shape. All right, so we've got that. Put them back to there. That one on there for a second. We then want a couple of things. So, go, go machine. All right, makes it easier to do this, believe me. Router cutter. So this is, from memory, a 5mm, trying to find the glasses, there they are, uh, quarter inch shank, 5mm diameter. So this is half the thickness of my board. Now this is 10mm, 5mm, right? Our cutter we obviously need in the go-go machine. Put it in, they've got that K line, that's a good guide, bring it up, it'll support it more. Get your spanner, do it up. Okay, good. First bit done. What do you want to do with your router? Now at this stage, this bit isn't in, okay? Don't go plugging it in yet. Got a lot to figure out. So what do you want to do? First of all, I need to know which way round you're going to hold it. So if you have a router, you're going to do this. Think about where you're going to grip which side, where the lever lock is, so up and down. So that will allow me to go down there, I'm going to come across. So this is the back edge of where I'm going to start. I'm going to go that way. Why is that important? Because I need to take the router down. I want to bring it through just a little bit more. Let's see if we can sit it there. With your cutter in situ, you need to turn the cutter around and measure from the cutting point on the router. So the out edge of the cutter, all right. Let's have a look on the overhead. Okay, so we have our router cutter in the center. We're gonna go from there to the outside edge. Don't know, let's just have a look on two then. See, that might be good. You can see the router cutter. I'm gonna go outside diameter to the outside edge of the router base, up here where the clear plastic is. So I've measured that. We then need to do one task. What have we got? We have. And I bet we didn't do what I need to do there. Uh, get that back into play in a second. So on here, this is the scrap bit. All right, that's that scrap bit. This is the work bit. This is the bit I said you need something to play with. I also have at this stage 
the little bit. It's just easier for me to hold on the camera. I'm going to get marking gauge. I'm going to set it up so it's level. That way. Sorry, Steph. <laughs> right, guy. Right, so that's there. Now, what am I trying to set up to? Now, an easy way of doing this, I want it the same thickness as my board. Oh, I could even get away with doing that. And then check the flat edge of the cutter is level. That's good. Now I can lock it off. So all I've used is those two off cuts to bridge it over sit on, push it down level. This end at the moment I have got on here. Yeah, it needs a little bit. And we've got to do it. So we'll move the jig for a second. Shooting board will come back in nice and easily. Back to the plane. We need the same discipline we've done with the box with the sat up bit. Nice square end. So back to the square. Not bad. Better. One to go. So we get it square on there. I'm going to flip it over this end. I've got to do a little bit of this handsaw cut on there, I can see. Good. And you can see where I've kind of set this up so we're working on the cameras all down this end so it makes it quick and easy to change things about. Right, good. So in here, let's have a look at where we think we are. Okay. Just going to raise it up a little bit. Go with the OSB for a second. So I'll put the bit of OSB underneath just to give me a bit of clearance so if I use the marking gauge, the cutting edge, it will go down, not resting on the board. This doesn't matter which side I'm on for setting this up. I want to create a scribe line across there. All right. Now, I doubt you can probably see that on here. You might see a score mark. All right. So, without knocking everything over on the bench, little line there. So we've got a scribe line. That gives me then a guide of where things need to be here. So if I push this in, make sure there's no dust in the corner. Next thing to check is when it comes up, even though this is just the practice bit, that it comes right up square against our stop on the front here. So when I've made the jig, everything is nice and square. I've even shoot the OSB board to do that. It seems criminal using a hand plane to play, but want a nice square edge, spend your time to get it. So that's doing a job now. Our measurement we said with the outer cutter. A bit too deep now, look. Bring it back. I've said about going from the outside edge of the cutter to the outside edge of the base. So I can take that measurement and I can measure from the scribe line backwards. Which gives me the position of where this baton, which is fixed down, the four screws, needs to go in location. So it's 51 mil. I can come back 51 mil. I can set it up, get it equal, fix it down. So in reality with this, it allows me to pass across. My cutter is in front of the router side of that line. So don't cut across there. All right, so we've got our, our test bit. I wonder if I can use, we can actually use one of those just for a second because we're not going to cut it, just as a hold board. Just in position, stop anything moving in the jig. First bit done. Right, we now need to test cut to a degree. I want to set one other thing up and we can do that now. It's worth looking at. We want to do a halving joint so we want to do half the cut. So let's zero the cutter. So Steph let's have a look on two. Bring it down. So I'm bringing the router down so the cutter now will hit the ply board. I'm not pushing it into just gently down let go of the stop. First bit done. Glasses back on. Now we said our board is 10mm. 
if I zero the depth stop, and I expect we can go for overhead for have a look at this, I can bring this bar down, down to a depth stop on here. Now in this route I've got this guide down on here, I can slide it up and down, I can bring it back down to zero. Right, so different routers will have different things, it's worth looking at. So this will slide, but I can set it, and it's got a bit of tension to it. Half a ten. Five. Okay. Look, I didn't say this was difficult, okay? We're going to bring this up. Five. So I've come up on my number scale. One, two, three, four, up to five. Lock that off. We now have created a gap in here, which is five millimetres. In there. So that should mean that we're halfway. Going to take a little bit of playing about to check. All right. Let me go that way. That's in there. Checking things are right there. Realtor, I can go plug in. That's on. That to there. Just set a few things up. Going to pinch the hose, hopefully, in there, and hopefully not pull everything off the bench. Back to that. So, goggles, earmuffs. First thing I want to check, we're on power there, we we'll turn off that though. I can know if we go on and off, we get a light, get a bit of noise. All right, so your earmuffs are quite an important part. So, you're going to have those, I've turned off, so what you can hear at the moment is the hoover. Direction of feed for this, we're working from left to right. So, I can come up to that stop. And without actually having it switched on, it's worth doing exactly what I'm doing now. Check this will move nicely from position, left hand side, across it, all the way over to the right hand side. What could cause issues? Wood screw. If it's not countersunk in, raised up, the tip will might the tip head might protrude. Likewise over here. Likewise, don't go having the screw, and I put one in here. I moved it because the cutter is actually going to come through there. You don't want to touch the screw head on the cutter. It's not desirable, okay? We sell more outer cutters, but it's not really the best way of getting over it. So, put those on. We can turn on. I can bring the cutter down in this scenario all the way down to that five. Come across, out the workpiece. Bring it up, switch it off. Now I made that look simple. Um, the reason I'm breaking this down, maybe in nice easy stages. People had problems with this over the years. All right, when we've done this as groups. So, I don't know if we go to four, just about sees it. Let's then do, I'm just going to bring the board forward just a little bit so the router won't hold in my voice. Sequence of work for this. And I've turned it off on the hoover at the moment, so I switch the router on, press go, get it running. Don't go panicking on this stage. Look at where my thumb now goes from my right hand. It bridges off there to the handle. So we'll go from there, I can then come down, let go of the lock lever. Even before I've entered the workpiece, then we slide across, clear out the back of it, back up, turn it off. Break it down to nice small stages, all right? So, just gonna that back to there, uh, pull it out. So at this stage we have our groove. I don't know if we can see that on two, look. So that's up on there, we've got our groove. What do we want to know? We want to be halfway. I come to this side. Now at the moment, I am 4.5 there. And we know this side. Oops, Andrew, let's go back to that. 4.5. So I'm a bit deep. 5.95. Okay. I'm going to play my fine adjuster. Bring it back a turn. Just a little bit. 
Now we shut the other end so for a second we can use that. And this is where your time goes, if you like, we're making things like the jigs and they're setting up. Now, the aspect of making a jig, once you've made it, you could make one box, you could make 20, as long as we're not making 20, all right? Your material is the same size. So, same whip, same thickness, so it's worth, if you're going to do a batch, maybe machine up a batch, get your wood in for doing the 20. You can machine them all in that same go. All right, so, have a quick look on here. So back on there. So to back to there. I've got to start one. Put my goggles back on. Get your earmuffs. Get noisy again. Reach those off the other end. So we're going to do that same technique we've just done. So I bring it down. My hand, right hand is supporting. Lock off the depth stop. We come across. Now at the moment, remember this is still the set up. Pick it up. Lift off. It takes a little bit of filling around. Now it might be the fact that you've got to trim the end off here again. That makes sense. Shoot it off. Do another cut, see what's going on. Difficult to get in there, can just, that's better. 4.68, so we're going to come down a tiny bit more. That bit in between. I'm feeling bright, but not that bright. So let's trim this off with this. In other words, be quicker to cut this off with your saw than it will to try and do it with the plane. Turn it back round. And this is aiming to get our halfway point. Like we said, a little bit of practice, setting up, get things right. things so we know I'm past the saw cut now we're square see what's going on there that looks good so I'll just put the plane back on the wall swap things over slightly that up just to pinch it in place <sighs> clean out the dust <sighs> more likely to get dust in here at the moment because we've got one side open nothing blocking that void we went on the fine adjuster down a little bit so let's have another go see what happens Turn the air off over there. Earmuffs back up. Must be getting nearer. 5.1. How about that? Right, so that little bit of pan about can be good. <sighs> now we're going to put the board that we had, that set up bit, we just put that back in. All right, I've turned it round. So I expect we look on the overhead camera, we can see slot up on here, we just cut. This end's nice and square. I'm just going to use support bit. 
So that's part of the box at the moment, just to hold that in place. We want to cut the other part of this joint. So how? So in reality, we need to move the router down by the distance of the cutter, five mil. So I've got, I used to have loads of little things like this, all prepped and cut. When I worked with the guy I made kitchens for before, I used to have a pile of these hang on my bench from three mil up to about six mil. All right, different thicknesses, by about half mil. So, so actually this is 4.95, 5.2. So these are rippings we've done, saw table. You could use something like ruler, it's actually two mil. We want something five mil. So we're gonna go with a five mil one. So my little spacer can sit in here. All right, up against that. So it's moved the router down five mil. So we're gonna to go to there. So we turn the power back on for the Hoover. Goggles back on, earmuffs back on. Start, bring it down. Come along. Same technique as we did before. So we've got our spacer, just lifted out of the way. Let's move the other two. Hoover back off. Gonna be lazy now. It's halfway. We're hoping we're not gonna need all of this halfway. I mean, that sounds a bit. I'm gonna come around to there. This is just to save me getting the shooting board back up on the bench. All right, precarious position. That looks good. Just, just stop. I'm sorry. You think I'm off camera? You want to see where the tripod is? Okay. So we have it cut. Two bits. Uh, let's have a look overhead. I think for a second. That's on there. So you have our two bits on there. We got our slot and our groove. Little wispy edge on there I need to pull off. So what we want to know is will these go together? Now what we're looking at when they come together. First of all, it can't be too too tight. If it's too tight, you'll crack the small fibers, end grain fibers coming up through the board here, you'll break it off. Alright. Just gonna push this down because it's easier to push it down on something flat. And easier to put things together on something flat instead of trying to do it freehand. Right? Now to give you an idea what we're after is a fit. How about that? that? Lovely. So it's worth that little bit of effort to set the router up, the minute adjustment, the fine adjustment, get it right. Check how things are here. That's not bad. Tiny little bit. That's good. I can cope with that. That comes together nicely. Are we, and I think if we run up to here, well, bring it in. Should come together nicely. I've got a tiny little chip on this corner where I think I probably dropped on the floor. I'll turn it over. There shouldn't be a gap on the end of that joint. That's pretty good. You know you're going to put some glue in it. That looks quite nice. So all that is quite important. That setup time can really be where your time goes because <sighs> now what do we want? Now we could do a variation on the box I've done. And I think we're going to do that. Instead of doing the joints where I better explain that. On the lid we have here, if we go overhead, we have cut in here, cut there. So this board has the cut in. So in other words, the joint shows through, comes to there. This one has the joint on the end, the halving point goes round. On the books I think we're gonna make now, I'm gonna do it slightly different. I'm gonna do the two cut throughs on the long and then the little tenons on the other. So good point to have this laid out. I think you can probably see this on the main camera. Move the pipe a little bit and just wiggle things about. If I can hook it down there, it might be useful. All right, good. I want to know which way things are coming together. There's nothing worse than cutting a joint going, I did the wrong side. I've been there, all right? Okay. You want to make a box, not a U-shape with a handle. 
All right, so on here we want inside face one. That one there. <sighs> Clean the dust out. Slide it down, check it fits nice and flat and square to this front edge. There's no point in having this one back higher. These should be flush on the back. Nice and firm. That fits in there nicely because everything's obviously pinching together. It's machined and made to go there. The bar's obviously adding a little bit of tension as well. So we're up to there. Router can come over. On this, we want to do the groove. So I'm already thinking about we don't need the spacer stick. We're doing, we take this one apart carefully. That part, no fence. So up to there. So let's get geared up again so we want goggles, earmuffs, power back on there. Put on, down to our deck, lock it off. Now I've got my hands in position so my thumbs are pushing up against that plywood bench stuff on the other side. That's the point of the drawing on the board, all the way across. Clear the board, bring the cutter back out, turn the router off. Nice simple stages, hasn't got to be a panic, got to turn them around. In position, <laughs> clear the dust out. Check they come up to the front again, going to do exactly the same. On, down, lock it off. Not too fast, get the cut of time to remove the work. Slowly out the forward because not as much material there now supporting the fibres. Push those out. So let's turn the air off. Let's go with the vernier for this look. So I just want to clean the dust out. Get a little bit because it's trapped in amongst that groove. The fibres expand when you cut stuff. So I want to get rid of them. So we've got our two boards. No fence. So we're going to do the other two. So, inside faces there, we want to have outside facing up. So inside faces there, I'm going to turn it over that way. In, slide it all the way down in. Again, check things are level on the top, check it's coming down, nice and secure. Spacer stick, one we tested, so this is the five, goes up against. We can go on, down on there, so that. we've got our space to stick in place, so we're off the workpiece at the moment, we lower the cutter down to our height, again the thumbs are doing a lot of work, I'm just going to check something, no look, I've got to add a, bit, a little bit of movement on the board but it looks okay. So I was checking, one of the boards just slipped back a little bit, but it's actually lined up. If you're worried about it, you could screw on a button on the back here, so stop block could be fixed down, stop anything moving in and out. Oh. <sighs> Again, get rid of those fibres that are going to get trapped in this front edge, got to get them out of the way. That one's tighter, so let's do that first, that's better. <laughs> All the way down, again I'm checking the front edge, things are coming. I can feel on the back edge where we got that, that this is nice and flush. 5 more spacer. Back to there. We come down. We come across.
tire spacer stick. All we're really doing is moving the router down half that cut. So, half five mil. Gotta get this back out. Ah. One. Good one. Okay, good. Now we're going to need this again. Now. I haven't explained this area on the side. We're going to use that. But. Let's see what we get then. Hopefully. Two is there. Four, three. Now you might need a little bit of a brazier just to sand across the top. You get a little bit of a fluffy edge. I expect you can probably just see the. All right, so you might need to sand that. And if it doesn't fit, scream. That one's tight. I might need to look at that. Shouldn't be that tight. Wonder why. Oh, I can see why. Right on the edge of the cutter. All right, if that makes sense. So we've got a tiny little wall built up just on the front edge. Again, brought the board back in just it's easier to show you. So, Japanese file. So I'm trying a little bit on here where we've got just over the edge of the cutter with the width of our board. I just want to take a tiny bit off. And there. Something I don't like on that back edge. Just got a little corner bit. Turn to action, just pull it. Um, we could go chisel, or I think I'm going to go back to my marking knife. Let's check all four, the one there. Look. So little things like this, where just doing that little bit of attention. You pull it off, you like to break the fibres back a bit further. And it will show. Again, just checking I've taken off that tiny step on the front. Got a little edge on that one as well. While right, we're here, we're going to check it. Uh, Japanese carving file. Just to knock off that a little bit. And hopefully things might fit together. Two, two is there. Nice and tight. So I need just a little bit of refinement. All right, but you can see how our joints are going in. Okay. Now I reckon that's too tight. The risk if I push it hard, what we're going to do, break it off. <sighs> so, what can we do? We could go with where we are, Japanese file. Uh, which way do I need to go if I take it off? off? It's only a bit off the depth, really. So I bring it over so I could put them back in. And this is almost ironic, having got the nice practice one done. Just that little bit tight. So we don't need the 4.9, we want our 5. We want to go back to the router. I'll bring that over. I want to go fractionally deeper. And I mean, it's minute, so I've just done the fine adjuster. A small little minute turn. So we've got earmuffs, glasses, everything back in, back to position, on, down, lock off. Tiny little bit of resistance, but not a lot. One end done. Turn it round. Again, checking everything's nice and square. Turn it down. Hopefully, 
Oh, it's there. Fine adjuster. So if I go down in depth a little bit, we take a tiny bit off. Turn around, just got to do the other end. Catch the spicer. Then hopefully, I know we're getting. I don't know if I can see it on just on here. You see this little corner edge? Everything is a wall. I get tiny little lip right on the edge of the whip for the cutter. So, of course, that's creating small stack. So. Something just to knock that off all the way across, quite an important part. I'm not trying to deviate the shape too much, so Japanese file works nicely and will give us a clean finish. Won't break out the back corner. Can do a tiny bit, I can get on there, just lose the fluff. I'm hoping that'll go in better. Gotta go careful going in and out. Bit of refinement just on the top here, I've got a bit of break out on the top of that groove, I just want to clean up. Make sure I've done those. I did the other boards, didn't think of these. One there, so this is where there's nothing supporting that very little corner bit when we come out. I'll go in. And then hopefully. To there. Let's move our bench board. That goes on to there. That's number two. That's even better. That was lucky. Three. I've got to go careful bring this out now. So, number one, if I can get them off. One is there, four is down here. Better. Three and one, got to line that up. So, hopefully, not bad, we end up, you can have a cube, you can have a tally, okay? So, you end up with your box frame, all right? That's first bit, all right? Get those little halving joints done. Next few sessions, we're going to look at doing routed groove, fit the lid in the base, the cutting, all the other little bits. But first bit there, takes a little bit, get that joint right. Last few bits in there, a bit frustrating. Yeah, that fits beautifully. Why, why are these a bit tighter? Yeah. That's timber. Reaction, heat, different things off the cutter. Maybe I'll move something. Maybe I didn't push down as high. Oh. So all those little things play a part in it. But minute adjustments, tweak things. Things like Japanese file can be good. Just take a little bit off. 
All right. So, end of the first one. Uh, this will continue with a little bucks. We'll see you next time. More we'll working wisdom. Thanks then. Bye then.